for the Thunder is what they really want it to be. Because personally, whether they do bad or whether they do good, it's it's a successful season nonetheless. As long as these guys develop, that is what they consider success. Just these guys just getting better. Hello and welcome to the Saturday, September 10th edition of the TV and Basketball Podcast with your host, TV. Hope you have a fantastic day and thank you for clicking on to watch or listen to today's episode. Before we start, I do have to plug my other platforms. Remember to follow at TV on Basketball on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for updates and the podcast and for other great content. If you're on YouTube, remember to like, share, and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will not miss an episode. And for my podcast listeners, remember to subscribe and leave your view if you're on Apple. And as for my Spotify, Anchor, and Podbean listeners, don't worry, guys, I see you. Just continue to show your support in any way possible. That would be highly, highly appreciated. And yeah, we're back here on the episode today, the fourth episode of the new season. Thank you guys for coming along for the ride, especially people on YouTube. The views are going up. I really do appreciate you guys. And today we're going to have another action-packed episode because, man, we are basically one month away from the NBA season, in which means time for content creators to go into their season previews. Now, if you've been on this channel long enough, You've seen me every single season do it kind of the same way. Go to the East, go through the West, and kind of go through my standings as to how I think I see that season, you know, shaping up. But this year, I'm going to be doing it a bit different. I'm going to be taking one division from the East, one division from the West, into a three-part series until I go through each team. And basically, I'm going to be talking about whether I see um, what I what I expect for the season for them to be for it to be a success and for it to be a failure. So yeah, it's not really like you know. You know, trying to figure out, you know, protect where they are, understanding stuff like that. I will maybe give, like, my short thoughts on it. But, you know, it's all about what this team, like, how this team sees, like, success this season or, and what they consider failure. So, I'm going to be going through that. Today, I'm going to be going through the Atlantic Division, also the Northwest Division. So, it's going to be a highly jam-packed episode. Again, thank you guys for all the support. And, yeah, I mean, it might be just me today, but there might be guests on, on, on part two of this, on part three. We'll have to wait and see, but I think going through all 30 NBA teams before the NBA, se- before the NBA season, there's kind of tradition around here, and I just want to do it a little bit different this year, so this is what we're going to do. So yeah, I got through all of that. I got through the intro. Let's get right into it, because there are there is a lot to talk about. And like I mentioned, the Atlantic Division we're going to go through in the East, and then we're going to go to the Northwest Division in the West. And we're going to start with the West. I mean, I course, I have to leave my favorite division in the whole league in the East. And there's a lot to talk about there, so we're going to go with that later. But we're going to start off in the Northwest. And we're going to start with the first team, because I, with this first team. Because, man, they have made a lot of moves this season. I'm going to be talking about the Utah Jazz. Yes, the Utah Jazz. The team that traded away Donovan Mitchell to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Who traded Rudy Gobert to the Minnesota Timberwolves. This is a lot different type of season for the Utah Jazz, where in the last few years, we said, you know what, this team has to break through. they got to make it to the conference finals. This has the potential to be an NBA Finals team, a potential dark horse contender. But they never lived up to that. Um, whether it was arguments in the playoffs or just their play style just didn't really translate into good playoff basketball. I mean, we remember that one year where they were first in the West. They looked like, you know, they were going to make some noise in the playoffs. Donovan Mitchell was going crazy. But man, Rudy Gobert lost, um, um, just got exposed by the LA Clippers, and then they they got exposed by the Dallas Mavericks last year. So they knew, you know what? We went as far as we could with this team. We got to blow it up, you know, in typical Danny Ainge style, who was there in the organization, um, just tear it all down so they can build it back up from the bottom, and that's basically what they did. So honestly, for the season, no championship, no playoff expectations for them this year. Really, a success for this team is having a top two pick in this draft. Either getting Scoot Henderson who or Victor Wembanyama, for them that is the the goal for this. They traded all of their pieces away, and they're still not done yet. They still got Bogdanovich on the roster. They still got Malik Beasley. They still got Jordan Clarkson. They still have um, other players still on that team. Mike Conley, that was the other guy I was thinking of. All those guys are still willing to get traded, and they are looking for a first round pick for each of them. So yeah, if you're trying to trade away all those junk, um, all those older pieces and bring in players like Colin Sexton, like a um, Jared Vanderbilt, Walker Kessler, Oche Abaji, all those other guys, you're looking to tank. So if you're not in that realm in the top three, top four, um, worst teams in the uh, in the league, then you're not tanking right. <laughs> you really are not. 
So, and I think that's what the Jazz are expecting for this season. I think anywhere outside of the t- – okay, I said top two. I think that's like the goal. But anywhere outside the top three was kind of a failure. And I know that's not in their control. That really isn't. But if that would that would kind of be kind of like a not like a it wouldn't be like what they want coming out of the season. Even like I would say a failure even worse than that is going outside the top five. Like somehow this team becomes um competitive in some aspect and they start pulling out some wins. That's not what you want this season. You want to go through these two, three bad years like the Thunder have been over the last few years of just accumulating assets, trying to get the top lottery picks and then bring in those top prospects over to your team. Again, this is just this is just the first year of a long term rebuild. Get rid of the old pieces, bring in new ones, and just see how it goes. This season should be trying to figure out who is part of your core long term, and if there's anyone, I mean, like I don't see anyone on this team right now as a number one guy. But who knows? Maybe we see Oche Baji do a lot better than expected. Maybe we see Colin Sexton kind of find his form after that injury. Who knows? That's what they have to try and evaluate here. They're bringing in a new coach as well. Um, along with you know a completely new roster, this is a complete fresh start for the Utah Jazz. So they have to, so they have to. It's just a lot of evaluating. That's what it all really comes down to. And once they got rid of all those old guys, let's see what what happens. This is not going to be that much of a fun team to watch. Let's gonna see how Colin Tyson does with a very poor um, supporting cast. But we'll have to wait and see. I mean, I didn't even mention people like Laurie Market, and he might even be traded somewhere down the line. Taylor Horn Tucker as well. But this is just a lot of waiting and seeing, and this is the first of men- of a few years where they're going to have to do the same process over and over again. So, yeah, the Utah Jazz, as long as they're in the, you know, the top three, top two picks, I think they'll consider that a success this season. Moving on to the next team in the Northwest Division, what are we going to be talking about? The Portland Trailblazers. And, yes, this team is definitely an interesting one because when you look at the West playoff picture last year, it's hard to like. It's gonna be hard to think like which of those guys are gonna fall fall out. And when you have the Portland Trailblazers and you have Damian Lillard right now, you expect to be in the in the mix. Like you, your goal is always a championship when you still have Damian Lillard on your lineup. But just looking at this roster, I just do not feel like it's a guarantee that they're gonna make the playoffs. Sure, they have Jeremy Grant. They still got Yusuf Nurkic. They gave Anthony Simons a back, so they're really hoping for him to take the next step. They got um, um, the rookie Shaden Sharp. We don't know if he's even going to be able to stay healthy this season. Like, they have some pieces there, and they could 100%. They could make the playoffs. But will they is the big, big question. Because if you just, like I mentioned before, the, the teams that made the playoffs last year, even near the bottom of the West, when you're looking at the Minnesota Timberwolves, when you're looking at the New Orleans Pelicans, who are going to have Zion Williamson back this season? I mean, do we really see those teams dropping out, especially because the Timberwolves, who I'm going to talk about later, brought in Rudy Gobert? I don't know. Like, there are not many openings in this in the playoff picture. Like, the Clippers are going to be back in the mix. The Lakers are still going to be back in the mix. The Grizzlies are just going to get better. The Mavs and Luka. It's hard to see the Blazers fitting into there. Like, where are they going to fit? Like, are they even going to make the play-in? I don't know, but anything but the playoffs is a failure of a season. They shouldn't be p- playing in the lottery if they have Damian uh, um, in on the team. But their team is just not good enough. It just really isn't. And then we'll be talking about a team in, the, um, in, like, in teams down the line where it would be like, you know what, the competition, even though they have these aspirations, they just do not compete talent-wise. And I think the Trailblazers just fall under that category. I mean, like, what? The best-case scenario for me, if I can, like, really see how they how it plays out the season, top six. If Damian Lloyd is back to top form, if Anthony Simons takes that kind of C.J. McCollum jump after he got the opportunity after Marcus Aldridge left, you need to see Jeremy Grant give, like, 20 points per game and stuff like that and still have a solid defense and play, play as a solid defender. That's a lot to ask for these players who, like, again, a completely different roster compared to last year. Yes, they have some good pieces, especially bringing in players like Gary Payton the second. Um, you also have, you know, another year of Josh Hart and stuff like that. It's an okay roster, but compared to the rest of the West, I don't know. So, yeah, their really only success is them making the playoffs and trying to go for another run to the conference finals, but they're just not good enough. They really aren't. If they're anywhere near the lottery, it's just a bad season for them. And how much longer can Damian Lillard take this? It really comes down to because we know that this team is not going to be competing or like, like truly in the mix for to win the West. 
what can they do with Dame? I mean, Dame wants to stay. He wants to ride it out. And, you know, I respect him for it. But it's just not it's just not happening in Portland. It really isn't. And this feels like, you know, a repeated record over and over again. But it's facts. The Trailblazers are just not going to get any better. And Damon Lillard, um, he's like, what, 32 years old now? His, like, his prime is, like, slowly coming to an end. And there's going to be less and less chance to win as the number one guy. So, yeah, the Trailblazers... It's going to be tougher than to make the playoffs, but that's really their only success. If they're, like, not in there, it's, a, it's another failure of a season, which the Blazers have faced a fo- a time and time again, especially in the Damian Lillard era. Fantastic player, but he just doesn't have the right pieces around him to succeed and go further into the playoffs. Next team we're going to be discussing is the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, this is a, definitely a weird team, and I don't want to go too, too deep into this because, sadly, Chad Holmgren... Um, Injury, a foot injury, which happened during the, one of the pro am games. He's out for the season. So for me, like success and failure for the for the Thunder is what they really want it to be. Because personally, whether they do bad or whether they do good, it's it's a successful season nonetheless. As long as these guys develop, that is what they consider success. Just these guys just getting better. Whether they're doing good and SGA actually like takes it to the next level, maybe has these guys competing for a playing spot. You know what? That's a successful season because you could see that they're these this team is developing a winning basketball mentality. But if they start losing again, which they have been for the last couple of years, you know, a chance at Wembenyama, a chance at Scoot Henderson, that type of stuff. So no matter what they do, whether they want to try and win some games, which you know I personally say they should try and at least go for it. Losing and losing every single year does not create a good culture. So maybe just at least try and compete this year. But I think either way, whether you go one way or the other, it's a success. It really is. As long as these guys get, just get better, that is a success for me. And I think it should be a success for an organization. I mean, it's a, basically a no year. With, with Chet not there, you're not really going to see this team in full effect. We just have to wait till next season when he's healthy to see what this team can truly do. The question is, can SGA just take this any longer? <laughs> I mean, he's been with the Thunder, and literally his first year with the Thunder, he was there with CP3. They did really well. They made the they made the NBA playoffs, and they took the Rockets to seven games. But it's different this year. It really is different this year for the Oklahoma State Thunder. And, again, if you go one way or the other, there's no like right or wrong you could do it. It's basically a no, a no year, so... Yeah, the Thunder, they're probably one of the, probably the only team where I feel like whatever direction they decide to go to, I think they'll just as long as their guys get better, it's a success. It really is. Next up in the Northwest Division, we have the Denver Nuggets. And now this team, I mean like the thing is with like other teams, they build and they bring in some players from the offseason, they trade some players away. But the Denver Nuggets, the additions they have coming into the season are in-house. My, Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. coming back from their long-term injuries. Their second and third best players on their team. Their second and third highest paid players on their team. Coming in to help out the two-time MVP, Nikola Jokic. And now they have expectations. Look, the last two years when when the um, Nuggets made the play made the playoffs, Nikola Jokic won MVPs. They're going to be people were like, yeah, you know, they don't have much expectations going into the playoffs because they're missing Jamal Murray, especially two years ago. They're missing Nicole Jokic's missing both Murray and Porter last year. You know, they they had it kind of easy. Now they have expectations to them, and now that they have those two players back, people are going to be expecting a conference finals appearance, a near, a potentially a championship run. But I'm going to take it a little bit easier on them. I think a success for the season is just making out the first round. We don't know what Murray's going to look like after that injury. Same thing with Michael Porter Jr. Just get him back in the flow. Try and build that identity of your team. I mean, you're not super old. You can kind of like use this year to kind of like get everyone back into place and know their roles again. Next season, that's when you want to be competing for a championship. This year, get anyone, everyone integrated back in their system. If it happens quicker than you know than you think, then great. Go. Then you can maybe make a conference finals run. Maybe make an NBA finals run. But right now... It's going to take at least the next few months to see like where this team is at. But I still have really high expectations for this team. I really do think they are a dark horse contender. Along with that, they still have players like um, Bones Highland, who after after his um, great rookie season is looking to be better. Jeff Green, a solid role player. They brought in Contavious Caldwell Pope, who should be a nice addition to their starting lineup. Um, Bruce Brown, another great addition to their bench. I think that they've done good enough to really help out the supporting cast and kind of 
still have guys that can produce offensively while garnering more defensive assets. I really do think that this team can really make it far if, you know, things go to plan. But with injuries, you don't know what the what the schedule is, like when they're going to be finally, finally playing at 100%. I mean, it's good to see all these workout videos and stuff. But you just never know. You really don't. So for the Denver Nuggets, if Nicole Jokic has another MVP level season, and you still have these guys, you know, getting back into, getting back, you know, into playing shape, I still think that they should be at least in the second round. That for me is a success this year. After this, maybe a conference finals finals appearance should be their, you know, their one and only goal. But right now, you have some time. These guys are not super super old. Just get them back into the flow of things. Once they got there, get their chemistry back. I think this team is going to be amazing eventually but this year it's just going to take some time this year it's just another i'm not going to say a no year but just improve from, from what you had last year and i think that's going to be a good season for the denver nuggets i really do think so so as long as michael malone can get these guys on the same page um and you know playing at the highest level i think they'll be fine so yeah the denver nuggets i think their success second round if there's a first round exit or below that it's definitely a failure of a season Next up, we have the final team in the Northwest Division, and we're going to be talking about the Minnesota Timberwolves. And last year, they were first round exit after losing to the Memphis Grizzlies in the first round in six games. But this year, it's different. They traded a lot of draft capital. They traded away Jared Vanderbilt, Walker Kessler, Patrick Beverly, these guys who were part of the defensive identity for this team, and they brought in the all NBA defender, the all one of the best defenders in NBA history, Rudy Gobert. And when you make a trade like that for Rudy Gobert, who is someone who is technically not under timeline with the other young guys, with Anthony Edwards, D'Angelo Russell, Carl Anthony Towns, they're kind of like a few years younger than Gobert. So when you make a trade for someone of that caliber, you want to go far. So for me, just like the Denver Nuggets, as if they can improve from, from last year, I think that is a W of a season for the Timberwolves making it to the second round because they haven't made the second round since KG. Or I don't even know if they even made it out of the first round with Kevin Garnett, but they haven't been able to yet. So being able to be in a situation where trading for Rudy Gobert mightily improves your defense. You take that step up from Anthony Edwards, from Carl Anthony Towns, still playing an all-NBA level. I think that that would be considered a successful season. Now, the depth is kind of a question mark, especially because you traded a lot of that. But Eric Pascal, Kyle Anderson, a good veteran, Jordan Mc Jordan McLaughlin, who was a solid backup player for them last year, Nas Reed, Jalen Noel, Jaden McDaniels, who are they really, really high on, Torian Prince, Brent Forbes. Okay supporting cast. They can improve in that midseason, yes. But I still think they have a support, uh, good enough supporting cast and it'll plus this trade with Gobert, they got to do better than they did last year. They really do. That trade has made their intentions very, very clear. They're trying to be part of the elite of the elite in the West. So we're going to have to see how that works out. But like I said, Anthony Edwards has to take that big jump, be the number one guy in that team, while the other guys continue to perform at their level, speaking specifically on Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns. I think, again, a sec, just like the Denver Nuggets, if they make it to the second round, I think that's good progress. That's something they could build up going into next season. But if they're in the same position as last year, first round exit to the Memphis Grizzlies, that type of thing, I think that is a a failure of a season. This team is very good, and it looks good on paper. Will it trend on the court? I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see how it goes. I'm excited to see how this team plays. And now, for a lot of people who have NBA 2K23, it's going to see NBA League Pass. A lot more eyes are going to be on teams like the Minnesota Timberwolves who don't get much national TV games. So, I'm excited to see how they do. Let's just see if that trade will really help that team for the better. Because I believe so. I really do think so. But we're not going to be 100% for sure of it until we see it on the court. That is the Northwest Division. Let me know if you agree or disagree. If one of your teams are there, let me know if you, if you have like different expectations for them this year. But yeah, leave them down in the comment section below of this or the Instagram post. Now let's move on to the athletic division. And this one, man, this one is interesting. And I'm going to start off with my team. I'm starting off with the Toronto Raptors, the 2019 NBA champions. Yes, sir. And yeah, for me, a success this, this season really is just one thing. Making the playoffs. They make the playoffs. I think it's a successful season. Missing out on the playoffs is tough. And I think it's going to be a lot harder than many people think because, man, 
I think I talked about this in the last week's episode. The East just buffed up. And I can name, like, even guys in their division. Everyone in this division is competing in the playoffs or for a championship. We face each of these teams four times a year. <laughs> it's going to be a dogfight. It's going to be an absolute dogfight. And just, like, seeing, like, the teams, especially, like, the Cleveland Cavaliers who didn't make the playoffs last year, bring in Donovan Mitchell. You see teams like the Atlanta Hawks, who were near the bottom of the East playoff picture, add DeJounte Murray. They're assuming to be better. And then you're just waiting for teams like the Brooklyn Nets. What, what are they going to be like? Well, how are the Boston Celtics going to um, come back this year? The Philadelphia 76ers. Like, there's so many teams that are competing for just eight spots in the playoffs. And it feels like there's going to be one team, like, kind of left in the dust, and that could be the Toronto Raptors. But how I feel about my Toronto Raptors is that whenever you doubt them, that's when they play at their best. You still got to, you know, most of the same players. The only really ma- real addition that you added to your team were people like Otto Porter Jr., who will definitely be in the rotation. Christian Coloco, he might spend most of his time in the G League. Um, players such as Josh Jackson. Um, and then besides that, I mean, it's just basically the exact same team as last year. A lot of their improvement in their team is going to come from within. And we already know that the Raptors have one of the best developmental systems in the NBA. So, yeah, I just think that the Raptors making the playoffs, I think, is a W. And even though the rap, you may look at this team on paper and be like, hmm, is this team really going to be able to compete with teams, even like teams with like the Chicago Bulls? Who knows? But I just think that Nick Nurse, one of the best coaches in the league, you have one of the best developmental staff in the league. I think that this roster is going to make the playoffs just because it's just, you know, part of their DNA. It's just part of the things that just year in, year out, they just tend to produce. And even players like that, they were like scared to get like to let go like Chris Boucher and Thaddeus Young. Bring him on for another couple years. They're able to have a full training camp with this team. I'm very excited to see how this team does this year. And I think that even with the, other, the teams in the East getting better, the Raptors will just continue to surprise people, and they will make the playoffs. I mean, they're used to outperforming expectations, even last year. They were fifth place in the East. Who really saw that coming? I personally myself didn't, and they were able to do that, so... I think you guys got to expect the unexpected with the Toronto Raptors. So even so, for those who don't think they're gonna make the playoffs, they probably will. They're just they're just used to it, man. They're just used to it. Moving on to the next team in the Atlantic Division, I want to talk about the New York Knicks. And I said that the, every like all of these teams are competing for a playoff spot. Yes, I do believe that every t- team here sh- should be competing for a playoff spot. None of them are really in tech mode or anything, and that includes the New York Knicks. This team that they built was built to compete in the playoffs. If you remember just two years ago, they were the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference. They had all-NBA player Julius Randle, and they lost in the first round in five games. Next season, they were like, you know what? I think that we're not we're not going to go, you know, f- you know, full balls to the walls or anything, but I like this team. Let's try and keep some players around. They gave a long-term contract to Alec Burks. They gave a long-term contract to New Orleans Noel. That backfired massively. They <laughs> signed Evan Fournier, and that really just derailed their season. I mean, Julius Randle fell back down to earth, and there was and this team. Were, to be honest, were not even really close into the play-in picture. But nonetheless, even though they did make the play-in this year, and the East got better, and the next, I mean, yes, they um, you know brought back Mitchell Robinson. They still have you know their guy, their young guys growing. It's just not good enough compared to the rest of the East. I mentioned that the Raptors might be a team that misses out. I mean, the New York Knicks, I don't even think they're under the level of the Toronto Raptors. So when you look at this team, I mean, it's a a lot of young guys with R.J. Barrett, Cam Reddish, all will be topping, Emmanuel quickly. Um, And then you have some of the old guys still around with, you know, they brought in Jalen Brunson to be that steady hand at point guard. That is a playoff team type of move. If they didn't expect the playoffs, they wouldn't be going for someone like Jalen Brunson. They wanted this because they want to be in there. So, yeah, making the playoffs would is a success of them. But if they miss out on the playoffs again, it's going to be a disappointment. It's going to be a failure of a season. Just like the Toronto Raptors. These guys are both – both of these teams are expected to make a push for it. But there are only so many teams that can make it. And comparing the Knicks town especially to the teams in front of them, I, I could see it happening if things go their way. But, again, it's also pretty likely that they're going to miss out as well. 
And that could be the case for a lot of these East teams. I mean, like, who's going to be, there's going to be, like, one team always going to be disappointed. Who is it going to be this year? Who knows? But this roster, compared to other rosters in the in the East, I just I just don't think they're in that level. And I think Jeff Van Gundy said the other day, the, the New York Knicks aren't really even a lock for the play-in. I mean, we still have to look at teams like the Charlotte Hornets. What are the Indiana Pacers going to look like this year? The Detroit Pistons, are they going to take that next step? Who knows? I mean, you never really know what some of these bottom end teams. I mean, the Washington Wizards. I want to get into them in another episode. I mean, they're, that team is about to try and make the playoffs. They're not a taking team. There's only so much spots. And the Knicks, like, maybe be pushed to the outside. And that's unfortunate for them because they did make, like, again, a fourth seed two years ago. But, man, this East, this East is talented. This East is talented. So I just just doubt that they were able to do it. But hopefully we get to see, you know, a better Julius Randle, a better R.J. Barrett. Maybe he could take the next step that we've been waiting for for a few years. And hopefully we can just see some more development going on over with the other guys around him, with Mitchell Robinson, Toppin, see if he is a legit NBA player, Emmanuel Quickly. Development is key with this team. They, Although they have some old guys on that team, especially with guys like Derrick Rose coming off the bench as well, you still have some young guys. And Thibodeau, as much as he doesn't play the young guys, we need to see development from them. So let's see if they can have a chance. Again, I could see them making the playoffs if things go right for them. I just I just don't see it. I really don't. There's just too many good teams out there in the East right now. They're just burdened with just too many just great, great teams right now. Again, one team is going to be disappointed. We'll just have to see who it is. Next team I want to talk about. <laughs> and, oh, man. This, I've been waiting to talk about this team. I haven't talked about them all summer specifically. But this is our time now. Let's talk about the Brooklyn Nets. <sighs> The, for me, success with the Brooklyn Nets is a finals appearance. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. A success here is a finals exp- appearance. You have KD. You got Ben Simmons. You got Kyrie Irving. You have you bring in pieces. You trade some more draft capital to get players like a TJ Warren. To get players like a Royce O'Neal. They re-signed Nick Claxton to be the center of their team. They built this team to be a championship contender. But they're, they're the team with the most question marks surrounding them. This team should be in the mix. And we've been saying that for the past few years, ever since KD did join that team. But what has that resulted? A second round exit? Last year, losing in five? They were the first team to be eliminated from the NBA playoffs. I think actually, you know, they even get swept. I think they might have just got swept too. Who knows? I, it doesn't matter. Four or five. Like, we just don't know what's going to happen with this team. But one thing is for sure, they're expected to be in the finals from their fans, from their organization, from people around them. I mean, uh, just like everyone in the NBA, we expect them just because they have KD, they have Kyrie. But are they are they going to be able to do it? I do not think so. There's just too much like going on in the in-betweens, behind the scenes, for me to really trust them. Because they can go up as high, honestly, as the first seed. If things like if things like you know magically get better, Steve Nash turns into a more competent coach, they could be a number one seed in the East. They could make it to the NBA Finals, but just as much as they can go to the NBA Finals, there could be another first round exit. If things even go worse for them, not even make the playoffs. That's how. This is how much of a spectrum the the Brooklyn Nets cover. <laughs> and the thing is, like. And like I mentioned, their goal when bringing KD, Kyrie, even James Harden a couple of years ago was to make the the play the finals. They haven't been so yet, and now that, and I just don't trust that they're going to be able to do it, especially because the teams around them, even two more teams in this in their own division. If you want, you can throw the Raptors in there too. They're just more of a coherent unit. They are more of a stable franchise. The Nets just feel like they're a ticking bomb, just waiting to explode, a dumpster fire waiting to happen. And it almost, you know, fell apart this offseason. KD almost left. Kyrie was asking for a trade. They had to, like, take the whole summer to kind of, like, to try and, like, guys, let's get on the same page here. We still, we're all wanting to win a championship. Just give us another chance. And now they're back. I don't know what the vibes are going to be at training camp. I don't know how this is going to translate to the to the regular season. Because what KD was having trying to do the last few years, Kyrie, you know, not take the regular season too seriously. I mean, we've seen what happens. If you face up against a team like the Boston Celtics, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Philadelphia 76ers in the first round, I do not like the Nets' chances. So, yeah. I mean, their success is a finals appearance. 
Anything less than that, it's another failure of a season. You've traded everything away your entire future once again. And you still haven't had a finals appearance. Super teams, they are few and far between. And people always want to make their own super team. Sometimes it doesn't always work out like that. And I think the Nets are learning that the hard way. Um, such great vibes a few years ago with that D'Angelo Russell led, led team. And now they're one of the most incompetent franchises in the NBA. So, yeah. I mean, they have to be like near the top for them to even consider this a successful season. Besides that, I don't see it as a success. KD, still a top you know, five player in the NBA, wherever you want to put him. Kyrie Irving, one of the best point guards in the league still. If they don't make it to the finals, it is not a successful season for the Brooklyn Nets. And I haven't even, I didn't even talk about Ben Simmons that much. <laughs> like this, he is already like a whole. This guy is a the human form of a question mark. Like what is going to happen this year? Like, I'm just I'm, once we see them on the floor, I don't believe this team is real. <laughs> this team isn't real until they actually step on the floor with each other. I'm excited to see what day one brings for this team. Next up, the Philadelphia 76ers. And the 76ers, I'm telling you right now, kind of the same as the Brooklyn Nets, maybe not as much. Not maybe the same type of um, goal as them because, you know, you didn't have, give up the entire future for it. So your whole, um, you know, their whole franchise is depending on these next few years or just next year how it goes. But the 76ers, for me, a successful season for them. It's making the conference finals. Anything less for that is a failure because Joel Embiid is one of the best players in the NBA. One of the best modern big men. And the fact that he hasn't made out the second round is blasphemy, in my opinion. Now, look, I mentioned this year in, year out. It's not his fault sometimes. He gets injured. The 76ers get injured. It just feels like later, they, the farther they go into the season, the worse luck they have. But, man, enough is enough. They have James Harden now. They're going to have a full training camp with him, along with Tyrese Maxey, um, Tobias Harris, Joel Embiid, of course. And you still have an improved bench with players like a D'Anthony Melton. You have still, you know, good role players in um, Matisse Thibel, George and the Yang. They brought in P.J. Tucker. These are moves that you make that you make if you feel like you're on the, on the cusp of a championship run or your goal is to make it to the NBA Finals. And not every team can make it. And they fall into that class. The 76ers, I believe, are going to get another MVP season out of Joel. And if they do not make the conference finals this year, there's going to be a lot of just internal thinking. Like, what do we do now? We've traded for James Harden. We tried making it work with Ben Simmons. We've tried changing the coach. We've brought in, like, different, like, we've tried, you know, developing our guys. What is there now? A lot from this season is going to dictate what they're going to do for the franchise going forward. But if they don't make the conference finals, I consider it a failure of a season once again for the Philadelphia 76ers. Their team is too good to not already have had a conference finals appearance already. And like I mentioned, I mean, their best chance was against the Raptors and they lost to a freaking five, six bounce Kawhi Leonard shot. But still, they should have been there by now. And the fact that Joel Embiid has not made a conference finals is absolutely crazy to me. So yeah, I mean, that is their goal for this year. Anything less than that, be another disappointing season. They just got to hope that the injury gods are on their side this year. That really is the case for the 76ers. If if he's on their side, I think they can expect good things. But the competition in the East, I keep saying it over and over again. It's it's tough. And I'm going to talk about this next team here. Are they even going to be better than this next team? I don't know. And we still have to talk about the Bucks. We don't know how good the Nets are going to be this year how big of a jump the Cavs are going to have, how big of a jump the Hawks are going to have, the Raptors in the mix. The East is stacked, man. The East is stacked. I'm excited to see all these games, but, man, it's going to be hard for the 76ers to go through, but maybe things will finally go their way this year. Let's see. And now the final team I want to discuss here is the Eastern Conference defending champion, Boston Celtics. And for me this year, same thing as the Philadelphia 76ers. A success is the conference finals. A failure is anything less than that. They just want a chance to defend their crown, and they want to have at least another chance to get to the NBA Finals. Because if you really think about it, I mean, the Warriors won, yeah, and you could maybe say in some ways in convincing fashion. But the Celtics were right there. It was only a 4-2 loss for the Boston Celtics. And they were, you know, 
I still consider them the top of the you know the cream of the crop there in the in the Eastern Conference along with the Milwaukee Bucks. What's going to be tough for them this year is just the two the tier th- two or three teams, like tier two tier three teams in the East. They're going to be a tough out no matter what. And I mentioned all the teams already. The talent is there. Are they going to be able to compete with that? Are they going to be able to hold up? They made some changes in the offseason to help, you know, address some of their issues, especially their point guard play. So they brought in Malcolm Brogdon, which was, I say, a fantastic, fantastic move on their behalf. But the guys are just going to get better. Jason Tatum's going to get better. Hopefully that was a great learning experience for him. Um, you see, hopefully you get a better production out of Smart, Williams, Jalen Brown, um, and stuff like that. You have a nice mix of veterans in there as well. You know, you still got the Al Horfords. Gallinari is going to be there, even though he's injured for the year, probably. But this team is looking for another, cha- looking for a championship. There are finals contenders for a reason. Great defensively, great offensively. They have a fantastic coach there, Ime Udoka. They're expected to make another run this year. What are they able to do? It we're gonna have to wait and see. I think anything less than a M- conference finals appearance is gonna be a bad season for them. They invested all this money, all these assets for to to build this team. They didn't panic trade Jalen Brown. Um, the, any of the last couple of years because they felt like this can work and honestly they were very very close this year they're gonna have to like keep it up it's gonna be interesting to see if like what happens if they do face up against a healthy bucks team or a you know these other teams as well whoever they face in the playoffs because even i think the first round is gonna be absolutely tough for anyone there but who knows but i expect big things for the celtics team i expect a mvp level season from um jason tatum Another great year from Jalen Brown. This is a fantastic team up and down the roster, all the way down to the coaching staff, all the way down to, um, you know, management. It's a very run well, uh, run well organization. Let's just see if they're going to be able to com- repeat the same success as last year and maybe even exceed that. Maybe this is the year to make the NBA championship. Let's just see if they're going to be have that final fatigue or anything. But I do believe they're going to make it far once again, have another deep run. Well, yeah, those are all the teams in the Atlantic Division. Let me know down below what you guys think. Was I too hard on some of them? Do I think am I too getting too easy on them? Let me know down in the com- in the comments, uh, sorry, the comment section below, and tell me what are, what do you what do you think for each of these teams? What is a success? This what is a successful season? And what is a failure of a season for them? But I think this is. But I think that that's the end of today's episode. I'm gonna again next week gonna go into another East Division, another West Division. So be on the lookout for that. But in terms of this episode, I think this is where we're going to end things. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Remember to show love on all the podcast channels. Like, share, and subscribe if you're on YouTube. And remember to hit the notification bell. And remember to follow Activity on Basketball on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, along with Tuck Talk for, for updates on the podcast and for other great content. Again, I'm going to be back with another episode like this next week. Maybe with a guest, maybe not. Be on the lookout for that. And just be on the lookout for just other content in general. NBA season coming up. Maybe some WNBA content. I might do some reviews on that because I want to see this NBA, the WNBA Finals, which is happening very, very soon. So, yeah, be on the lookout. Just follow all my socials and you'll see all of that. And, again, thank you guys for all the support. I really do appreciate you all. But, yeah, this is where we're going to end it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day. This is TV signing out. Take it easy, guys. Peace.